Yes, it's right here, room 230, Dr. Rob's class. Is he a good teacher? Yes, he's a very good teacher. Just don't be late or talk while he's talking. Thanks for the advice. The circumference of a circle is 15 pi centimeters. What is the area of the circle in terms of pi? A, 7.5 pi square centimeters. B, 15 pi square centimeters. C, 56.25 pi square centimeters. D, 225 pi square centimeters. Hi. Hi. You have a pass? Thank you. Well, I've been having some thoughts, ladies and gentlemen, about the class, and I want to be a good teacher to you, and I want to try a few different things. So, one of the things I was thinking about was letting people try to teach. So, I'm going to get a new student teacher. So, guess what? You're going to be in. Hi, but I'm new to the school and I don't know if the math that I've learned is the same as your math. Oh, don't worry about it. Math is math. So, I'm sure you'll do fine. What's your name again? Asha. Asha, okay. Uh, you can take that seat right over there. All right, class, we got a new student. Aja's in our class, so say good morning, Aja. Good morning, good morning Aja. Aja. All right, so here's our question that we have to find the circumference. So um, let's see, it's multiple choice. So let's see, the radius is 15. Dr. O, you shouldn't have said radius. You should have said diameter. Oh, I said uh, diameter or radius? Oh man, I made a mistake. I'm sorry, since you're so smart, yeah, yeah. you come up. What do you think the answer is, by the way? C. See? Come on up and show us. Radius equals one half to the diameter. Radius equals one half of 15. Radius equals one point, oh, seven point five. Area equals pi and radius to the second power. I change, I exchange radius for 56.25 pi. She's smart. You have a question, young man? No, but you could call me Swiss Jolts. Nah, that might work on my sister. Oh! oh! Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go on to another problem. I'll make sure you know my name. Which expression is equivalent to negative 18 subtracted by 64n? All right, here's our question for today. Looks like the answer is going to be C. We're going to see why. Hi. Hi, I'm Jocelyn. I'm new to the school. Oh, you must be Aja's sister. Yes, you can say that, but I'm friendlier than she is. Okay. You have a pass? Yes. Okay. okay. 
Okay, go sit over there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's continue with our question. Is anyone sitting here? No, you could sit here. My name is Jasmine. Hi, I'm Jocelyn. How's the teacher? Is he any good? He tries, but I'm bad at math. You see, my old math teacher was absent most of the time. We had different teachers every day, and I really didn't learn much. Now, now it's even more difficult for me to understand this new kind of math when I don't understand the old math. Oh, that's sad. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm pretty good at math. I'll help you if you want me to. Don't worry. Thanks. No problem. All right, here's our next question. Let's get to it. Three classes at Peace Scale Middle School raised money to buy new computers. Ms. Moore's class raised $249. Ms. Aguilar's class raised $396.62 more than Ms. Moore's class. Ms. Barry's class raised Four hundred and thirty dollars and forty three cents less than Miss Aguilar's class. What is the total amount of money raised by all three classes? A two hundred and fifteen dollars and nineteen cents. B four hundred and sixty four dollars and nineteen cents. C one thousand seventy six hundred dollars and Five cents or D, one thousand one hundred and nine cent, one hundred nine dollars and eighty one cents. Work together with your partners to solve this problem. So do your best. Good luck. Okay, I got this. Let's make a total here. Then look at this and you subtract that to get choice D. Wow, you're good at math, Doctor Rob. We got answers D. Wow, I'm impressed. Very good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you tomorrow.
Okay, so we have our question in English. Which number represents the probability of an event that is very likely to occur? Okay, in español. ¿Cuál de estos números representa la probabilidad de que un evento es más probable pasar o ocurrir? Here we have our options for choices. A, 0.12. B, 1.3. C, 0.89. Or D, 0.09. Entonces, aquí tenemos nuestras respuestas y la pregunta. Uh, who thinks they can respond to this question? ¿Quién puede determinar cuál sería eh, la respuesta correcta? Ustedes tienen que entender que la probabilidad puede ser una fracción. So it could be a fraction. Puede ser eh, un décimo. Could be a decimal number. O también puede ser eh, una porcentaje. Could also be a percentage. ¿Verdad? Entonces, ¿cómo vamos a eh, hallar la respuesta a esta pregunta? So how are we going to solve for this? Oh, the answer is C. Muy bien. Entonces, la respuesta que ella dio es la respuesta C. Y esto es la respuesta correcta porque cuando el número se acerca al número 1, esto es el, el número que eh, indica la probabilidad. Entonces, C es la respuesta correcta, porque como todas las respuestas, esto es la respuesta que acerca más al 1. Ok, so the answer we got was the letter C. And the letter C is the correct choice. Why? Right? Why does C um, indicate the most uh, probable? Well, um, the number that best approaches 1 is the number that would indicate uh, probability, the greatest probability. So uh, given our choices, C is the number that uh, gets closest to the number one. So then C, um, as a result, would be um, our correct response. And I'm even gonna chime in on B because I see 1.3. 1.3 is a good answer, but it's too high. It's over one. Probability has got to be between one and three. And Miss M, if you wouldn't mind telling them that in Espanol, I would appreciate it. Sí, so lo que el dijo Dr. Rob es, uno no puede ser la respuesta correcta porque es más grande, es un número más, eh, más grande que, que uno. Entonces, eh, supercede ¿no? el número uno. Entonces, no puede ser porque es un número más grande que uno. Sí, es más grande. A spinner with seven equal sized sections was used to play a game. It was used 250 times in the first game. Of those 250 times, the arrow landed on section seven, a total of 35 times. The same spinner was used 150 times in the second game. How many times did the spinner most likely land on se section seven in the second game? Un spinner con siete lados iguales fue usado para jugar un juego. Si, fu, si en el primer juego fue usado 200, en el primer juego fue usado 250 veces. Eh, de esas 250, eh, la flecha cayó siete, en, en la sección 7 un total de 35 veces. El mismo spinner fue usado 150 veces en el segundo juego. ¿Cuántas veces el spinner cayó, casi cayó en la sección 7 en el segundo juego? All right, so this time we got a spinner with seven equal size sectors. And they're playing a game. They used it 250 times. Oh, muchas veces. So a lot of times. 250 times in the first game. Of those 250 t spins, the arrow landed on section 7, 35 times. So the probability of getting 
a 7 would be 1 out of the 7. Why 1 out of the 7? Because there are 7 equal size sectors. So the probability of getting the number 7 would be 1 out of 7. And if you want, I can draw it so you can see it. You'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I messed up there. My drawing a little bit. 7. So there are your sec sectors. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's only one 7 that you can get out of all the 7 numbers. So the probability of getting a 7 would be 1. They did this 250 times in the first game. So I'm going to take this 1 7 and multiply by 250 because it's going to tell you that it's going to give you 35. It's not going to be exactly 35. It's going to be a little over 35. 35 point something. So but it came out to approximately 35 times. Now they're going to do it one more time. And this time it's 150 in the second game that they're playing. So they got a second game. So they're not doing it 100, 250 times. They're doing it 150 times. Well, I'm going to tell you if it's only 150, I'm not going to get 35. I'm going to get less than 35. So all I need to multiply is 1 7 times 150. And that should give us not 35, not 30, not 14, but around 21 would be my guess. But you can use your calculator to find out what that answer would be. So Ms. Sam, if you wouldn't mind translating what we did, I would appreciate it. Muy bien, entonces, vamos a empezar aquí. So tenemos un giro y tiene siete lados o siete secciones equivalentes y se usa para jugar un juego. Eh, el giro eh, lo usó 250 veces en el primer juego. Entonces de esos 250 veces la flecha del giro llegó en sección 7 un total de 35 veces. Ok, entonces el mismo giro se usó 150 veces en el segundo juego. Entonces, 250 veces en el primer juego y después 150 veces en el segundo juego. Ok, ahora la pregunta. ¿Cuántas veces eh, llegó la flecha en la sección 7? en el segundo juego. So, ¿Cuál es la probabilidad de que ocurrió eso? Llegó en la sección 7. Bueno, entonces eh, lo que tiene Dr. Rob aquí es él puso un círculo y tiene siete secciones del círculo y este círculo representa el giro y ustedes pueden ver la, la flecha, ¿no? Bueno, aquí tiene el fórmula, P con 7 equivale a un séptimo. ¿no? Después él toma esta respuesta de un séptimo y lo multiplica por 250 y resulta en esto, 35. Y después tiene el un séptimo, lo multiplica por 150 y llega aquí con esta resulta 21. Entonces 21 corresponde con la respuesta que tenemos aquí y corresponde con la respuesta B, 21. Gracias, señora. So it doesn't make sense some of the answers 35 and 30 because if you spun it 250 times, you're not going to and you're spending it less times on the second game, you wouldn't expect to get 30 or 35, especially if you're spending 100 times less. So that's why B makes more sense, okay? We took our cameras around the school and we asked people some questions, so here's what we got. How are you preparing to take the big math test? I'll take the big math test. I am preparing by getting my notes, and gathering all the information I have in my notes. Do you think math is an important subject? 
it is an important subject because you would need it for work and to help if you have little brothers or sisters at home. Name one thing you like about your math class. One thing I like about my math class is my teacher because he teaches me well and I get to learn more about math. Okay, thank you. How are you, how are you preparing to take the big math test? Oh, I study every day for an extra 10 minutes. Do you think math is an important subject? Yes, it's very important. You use it every day, like spending your money and stuff. Name one thing you like about your math class. Can I be honest? Of course. I like when the teacher makes math fun, like playing math games. Thank you. How are you preparing to take the big math test? Reviewing my notes and quizzes. Do you think math is a important subject? Yes, because for different jobs you need to learn math. How are you prepared to take the big math test? Pretty, uh, pretty often. Um, I just study all like the do nows and stuff, and like I just study all, like, all the notes to make sure that I memorize them before like the test. And, yeah, that's all. Do you think math is a important subject? Yeah, pretty, yeah, technically it is because like math is basically like all over the world and stuff, and you basically need math in almost everything. So yeah, it is pretty much important. Name one thing you like about your math class. I like the fact that um, we actually get to do like all the games, we get to do Quizlet Live, and we get like candy and money, and yeah, that's what I basically like about my math class. Thank you. But I also, I also like Dr. Rob. Your name is Mr. Coons, correct? Correct. Correct. Now, Mr. Coons, uh, I heard you guys use mathematics in your job. You're the head custodian of Pittsfield Middle School. Can you tell us a little bit about how you use mathematics? We use mathematics every day. I mean, uh, mixing chemicals, certain chemicals, you know, our, our ratios were in certain parts of water to certain parts of chemicals. So we use that daily. Um, measurements for different things like cutting ceiling tile, replacing sheetrock, stuff like that. Uh, we use the bulk of our math in the pool. Mm. Adding chemicals, subtracting, you know, uh, how much you need to where you're at, to where, where you, you want to be. Um, it's very surprising how the math that we learned like in middle school and high school, we use fluently and not even really think about it during the course of the day. I see, wow. Um, so like for instance, if we're making a chemical addition, we'll figure out how, many, how, many, how much chemical we need versus where we're at. So if we want to raise the chemical level of the pool by a point, you got to figure out, okay, I have this much gallons of water, and then I have, you know, I need to be at this figure. So you turn around and you adjust your chemicals to make it to the following figure to raise it up the point or two that you need it. Wow, that, that's very exciting because we do teach about those ratios and how to do that, but that's in our advanced mathematics classes. I'm really impressed because you think that we see you guys basically uh, cleaning up the building and getting it so meticulously clean. We would think that you guys don't bother with mathematics, but man, you really taught us a great lesson. Mr. Coons, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to share how you use mathematics. Take care. Thanks, guys. All right, everybody. We're going to work on this problem. I want you to copy it down. Please take out your homework also. I got the horses in the back, horse stock is attached, head is mad at black, got the boosters black and match. Riding on a horse, ha, you can whip your horse. I've been in the valley, you ain't been up off that porch. Can't nobody tell me. I did my homework. I know you took my homework. Where's oh, I didn't. I didn't take your homework. Mom, did I take your homework? No. Thank you. Where is your homework? I don't know. I don't know. Can't nobody tell me nothing. 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 
Yeah, that's why I can't stay. You're too groggy. All right, I can't take this arguing back and forth there. Uh, uh, I'll give you credit for the homework. You go sit over there. What's going on over there? Hey, I want you, you, and you to see me after class. Oh my God! Did you hear that switch like that new girl, Aja? Yeah, I heard she dissed him in front of the class. <laughs> she told her maybe that line will work on her sister. <laughs> 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 Negative six lie on the same line. If the slope of the line is one, what is the value of x? So, in doing this problem, you want a minus one from negative six and four from x. So, you get um, you want to substitute negative three first since that's your first answer, and you get negative seven. So, when you Subtract these, you also get negative 7, which equals 1. And since this is 1, just get the other one. A function of x is shown on the coordinate plane. Over which intervals is the function increasing? So you highlight these since the line is increasing. Um, these lines are decreasing, so you wouldn't undermine them or highlight them. And the domain is, for this line, is negative 4 and then x negative 2. And then this line is 0 to 2, x 2, and so your answer would be b. A circle has a diameter of 26 units. What is the area of the circle to the nearest hundredth of a square unit? So this question is asking us to find what? What part? It's asking us to find the area of the circle. So to find the area of the circle, we need the area formula, which is A equals pi r squared. And it tells us that the diameter is 26 units. But I don't need the diameter, I need the radius. So I have to find the radius. And to do that, the radius is equal to half of the diameter. So if my diameter is 26, and I divide that by two, my radius is 13. So now I'm ready to substitute that in to here. So my area is pi 13 squared. 13 squared is 169. On your calculator, you use the pi button. You do 169 times pi, and you round your area to the nearest, your answer to the nearest hundredth, which is two decimal places, and this is your answer. Dr. Rob, I didn't even do anything. She called me grimy for no reason. Well, I don't care who threw the paper. I don't know who did it. I didn't see anything. But I want this stuff to stop. Oh, you grimy because you took my homework. Did you see me take your homework, though? No, but I just know you did. Look, quiet, both of you. I want this settled. Switch, do you want your coach to hear about this? No. Aja, I want this to stop the arguing, the bickering, and the fighting between you and you're new in the school. So I want this settled. I don't want to hear any more about it. I don't want to hear any more papers thrown, because if not, there's going to be real trouble. You got me, Switch? Yes, sir. You got me, Aja? Yeah. All right, go to class. I heard your sister likes Switch Jones. Who? Switch Jones, the captain of the basketball team, Ezekiel. Um, well, I'm captain of the cheerleader, so tell her to get in line behind me. I think you got it twisted. Is he Jack or her? You better tell her to stay away from my man before she get lit up. I told you, my sister doesn't like you. She only likes school, so get it right. School? What? Is she a nerd or something? I just know she better not be after Swish. Believe me, she's not. Okay, class, here's our next problem. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we have a different type of problem. 
which is going to lead us into the state test problem. So we want to find the median of the following set data set, one, three, and two. So who could tell us what would be the median of this data set? Uh, three. Well, three would be a good answer because median means middle number, but the answer is really two. Why is it two? Because you forgot to do one thing. Set the numbers up from the smallest number to the largest number. So that will be your median. So we're going to talk about those three magical words of statistics, mean, mode, and median. All right, so first what we're going to deal with was mean, median. So now we're going to deal with mean. Mean is another way of saying the average. How do you find the average? You add up all the scores, and then you divide by the number of items you have there. So um, we have three scores here. We got one plus three plus two, that adds up to six. And now we have to divide. Divide by what? The three different scores we have. So if we divide that by three, our average would be two. So that would be our average, which is called the mean. All right, so I want to stop here at mean to show you what the state test did last year. They used this word mean, and we have a problem that we're going to deal with. The table below shows the lowest temperature in degrees Fahrenheit on each of the five days for a city. Monday is negative 36 degrees Fahrenheit, Tuesday is negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit, Wednesday is 12 degrees Fahrenheit, Thursday is negative 3 degrees Fahrenheit, and Friday is 18 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the mean lowest temperature in degrees Fahrenheit in the city for those five days? All right, so the key word in this problem is mean lowest temperature. Again, we talked about that word mean, it means to find the average. We have five days that we're dealing with of temperatures. And notice, some of the temperatures are negative and some of them are positive. And you remember the rules for adding positive numbers? You can add up positive plus positive. So 12 plus 18, that'll give you positive 30. So when we add that up, positive 30 degrees Fahrenheit. But here we got some cold degrees that are in the negative zone. So we got a negative 36, we can combine that with the negative 25, that'll give us a negative 61. Now we check those two off, and there's a negative down here, which is negative 3. We add that negative 3 onto that, that gives us a total of negative 64 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's really cold. Now, we're still trying to find the average, but let's first get these two numbers together. You remember we can't add negatives and positives. We have to subtract them. That'll give us 34. Choose the sign of the negative because the 64 is larger. So we got a total of negative 64. That would be 34 degrees Fahrenheit, which would be the total temperature. Now we have to divide that by the number of days that was there, and that'll give us the choice B, which is negative 6.8 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is how we find the average of this question. This was a dynamite question on the state test, so please make sure you get to know that word mean. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're finally coming down to the New York State test and we're gonna prepare ourselves for it. So we've been doing a lot of good work lately and now it's time to really get down to business and we're gonna take that test and we're gonna do very, very well. I'm very proud of everything that you all have done. So keep up the good work and be ready for the state test. Did you hear that Swiss likes a new girl, Audra? Yeah, I heard she dissed him in front of the whole class. She said maybe that line will work better on her sister. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? I'm just trying to get my work done. Hey, I don't know what you guys are doing over there, but I don't like it. I told you all to stop and be serious. Aja, there's only two rules that I have. One, don't talk while I'm talking. And two, don't be late.
Don't talk while I'm talking. And two, don't be late. Hi, do you know where the math class is? Yes, it's right here, room 230, Dr. Rob's class. Is he a good teacher? Yes, he's a very good teacher. Just don't be late or talk while he's talking. Yes, he's yeah, a very, he's good, a very teacher. good teacher. Just, Just don't, don't be, late be late or, or talk, talk while he's talking.
Introduce yourself. My name is David Espana. This is Santiago, Osaka, Jasper, and Bridget. Okay, so I see you guys made looks like cake, a two layer cake, and, and brownies. And brownies. Wow. Okay, I'm impressed so far. So let's talk about it. Okay, David. Now, uh, or anyone you can answer this question. Uh, did you all make this? cake and brownies by yourself? Not by ourselves. We did have some help with the oven and putting on the other layer with oh, the cake. Okay. So most of the work, like the frosting, the making of the bread, was at, was our work. Okay. Whose house did you make it in? We made it in my house. Oh, I hear two of the answer. Whose house did you really make it in now? Uh, David's house. David's house? Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright. How long did it take you to make? Like maybe three, four hours. Yeah. yeah. It took us four hours to make the cake and brownies. Oh. Yeah. Four hours to make the cake and brownies? Yeah. Wow, I am very impressed. Did anybody's parent help? Yeah, yes. yeah David's mom helped us. Your, oh, your mom, David? Yeah. Jess, what about your mom? I went to his house. Oh, you went to his My house? Okay. All right. Well, let's take a look at what you all have on the cake. All right, I see you guys made a nice cake here, two-layer cake, you said. Tell us about it. Um, What's the stuff on here? Then? We put an equation, which is 5x plus 5 equals 25. Mm. And we did x equals. We made a box and put sprinkles over it so you can see the answer. Oh, okay. Uh, do you know the answer? The answer is 4. 4 is correct. Very good. I am very impressed. Who thought of that equation? Um, David and Jasper. David. Oh, thank you, David. Thank you, Jasper. All right. Over here, I see you got brownies. So let's talk about the brownies. Who's going to speak about the brownies? Okay, so the brownies are math symbols that we learned uh, over the uh, past month and past weeks. Ah. Can you talk about some of those symbols? you mind pointing them out? Yeah, sure. So, the... Uh, this is like uh, the hashtag, like it could be any number. And okay. this is like the uh, adding symbol, multiplying symbol, and the equal symbol, and there's a lot more. Oh, wow, I am really pre impressed with these symbols. Yummy, yummy, yummy brownies. Well, thank you so much for what you guys and young lady have done. Again, one more time, give us your names so we can make sure to give everybody good credit for this assignment. Uh, my name is Santiago. My name is David. My name is Bridget. And my name is Jasper. Uh, anybody else help out? Um, yeah, uh, Jose. Jose. Thank you so much. Excellent project. You're going to get a great grade. Keep up the good work. Thank Bye. You. Okay, go ahead. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Pick a card. A recipe requires one third cup of milk for each one fourth cup of water. How many cups of milk are needed for each cup of... I mean, how many cups are needed for each cup of milk? Well, I believe it's three fourths. Yeah. Good, I remember that question. All right, so we got it right, so you get to go up one. Yeah. 
Yeah. Nah, I guess you get to roll again, right? Yeah. Okay, grab that dice cube and roll again. Okay. Four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Good. And now pick one more card. Move two spots forward. <laughs> All right. Wave at the camera. Brownies, huh? Yeah. All right. Did you make them by yourself? My mom helped me a little. Oh, she did? Yeah. Okay. Then I'll let that slide. I see you guys made a game. Introduce yourself. You are? Javion. And you are? Everybody. And you are? John. Okay. Tell us about the game, please, Javion. So, you get two tries. So, you have to answer a question, and if you get it right, you have to shoot it. Okay. So, you get to shoot at the basket over there? Yep. Okay. All right. Let's get, show us one of the cards that we got to try to answer. It's right here. Okay. Multiplication. All right. Who wants to answer that question? Me. All right. It's 10. 10? All right. 5 times 2 is 10. All right. Let's see if you make, make, make it from the star line here. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Aja. Oh. One more try. One more try. Wait, I gotta do it. Wait. What else? Uh, Fifty-four. Okay. Cash. She made it. Congratulations. Give it a hand clap. Nice game. Anybody else want to give it a shot? Say three. Three. All right. Don't go. No. Okay. Yeah. When you guys were creative, you can give it a shot too. Because I know y'all got skills on the ball game. Don't mention me. All right, Sage. What's Zero. it? Zero. All right. Okay. Nice. All right. Want to try again? Yeah. Okay. Twenty-two. <coughs> nice. You should be on the girls' basketball team. Thank you so much.
But before we talk about the cake, let's talk about you and who actually made it. Now, who made this cake? Me and my mom. <laughs> and your mom? She helped you, huh? Yes. All right. Well, how long did it take you to make it? An hour. An hour? Yes. Oh, okay. Now, I notice it has some nice designs on there. Did you put those designs on there or did your mom put it on there? Me. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's talk about some of those designs because I see there's some numbers and symbols. Can you talk about those numbers and symbols, what, what they are? Yeah, I just put some, adding some pie. Pie, oh. Equals And this is cake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I put some greater than, less than sign, multiplication. Oh. Wow, Division. this is pretty. Wow. How long did it take you to make this again? An hour. An hour? Even with all those pretty decorations like that? Just an hour? Yes. Wow, it would have took me all day to do that. Well, I'm really, really happy and it looks so good. I cannot wait to eat it. Jenny, thank you so much. And I want to say thank you to your mother for making that cake for us. You're Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>
Oh my god. <laughs> Action in five. I'm four. already rolling. I know, but just stop it. Action in five. Four. Action. Oh, 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 Action. I can't hold this for everyone. Final set, please. Action in five, four. What? Mm. Final set, please. Action in five, four. No, no, no. Oh. Four. <coughs> Cut. Four. I can't even talk, bro. Oh my gosh. Wait, we should roll it. Action in five. <laughs> Action in quiet on set. Action in five. Four. Did you hear the... I'm sorry. Nope. 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 <laughs> Did you hear that switch like the new girl, Aja? Yeah, I heard she dissed him in front of the class. She told her maybe that line will work on her sister. Action in five, four. Did you hear Swiss likes that new girl, Aja? Yeah, I heard she dissed him in front of the class. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the last part. <laughs> I forgot my line. <laughs>